Uh, Milwaukee Police Chief Edward Flynn is with us in the room. And Chief Flynn, if you could stand up. Uh, you have said something because so much of what this town hall is about is trying to find a way to bridge the divide. But you said, quote, without any hyperbole, police officers in American cities care more about black lives than any other institution. Police officers of America cities are the only ones dying to protect black lives. I'm curious what you mean by that and what you expect to see in, in the final six months of this presidency. Uh, a lot's expected of you, Mr. President. And uh, <clears throat> why should I be any exception? Well, I, as Michelle said, I volunteered for the job, so I can't <laughs> complain. Um, I'm basically going to ask you to figure out a way to uh, uh, cross parallel conversations. Mm -hmm. And I think it's going to transcend the duration of your presidency, right. which imposes a special burden of you on you because of your unique place in history. The parallel conversations you've in fact implicitly alluded to in the course of our conversation today. For the urban police chiefs in America, we are primarily judged by our ability to lower levels of violence in disadvantaged communities of color. In those communities, crime has not significantly gone down. It's gone down in some place called America. But in those neighborhoods, there's easy access to firearms, to which you've alluded, and there are extraordinary rates of violence. Nationally, African Americans represent 51% of our homicide victims, right. with about 13% of the population. In our cities, it's more like 80%. Right. And like most homicides, offenders look like the people that they victimize. Right. It's an urban tragedy, but the heart of the police dilemma is those neighborhoods that demand our services, need us the most, request us the most, depend upon us the most, for social and historical reasons, distrust us. Right. And when there's a series of critical incidents like we've recently seen, that distrust is in high relief. We can't protect them effectively if we're not trusted, and the police are needed, as you've said, right. in those neighborhoods. And so the challenge is, how do we talk about both things at the same time without li acting like we're blaming the African-American community for their victimization, or that we're assuming that all police are racially biased. I understand the Black Lives Matter movement exists because there's a sensibility that black lives didn't matter. All right? And that's for a number of social and historical reasons. It gets to exist and to advance that agenda. It doesn't mean anybody else's life doesn't, um, doesn't matter. But for us, the problem's this. All there is is the police in the community. There's no cavalry coming. Right. Many of our cities are in states that are dominated by interests that act like the cities are the enemy. Right. State legislators want to help us, help us do something about guns. All right, what was that man doing with an assault rifle? I mean, fine, go to the funeral of the five cops, but how did, that co how did that guy get that assault rifle, and why could he walk down the street with it and then use it? Okay, that requires some political courage. It requires mass movements. There's a lot of moving pieces here. Yeah. So we have to work together. We know that. And everything that divides us makes us all more vulnerable. Makes the police more vulnerable. Makes the community more vulnerable. They're the ones that need us the most. And so the challenge, the easy challenge I offer you in the next six months, but also I would hope, I would also hope beyond that, yeah. is to use your authority, your influence, and your prestige as a convener to continue this discussion, because I don't think things are going to get enlightened during this election, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and so that conversation is going to have to take place parallel to this election yeah. and beyond it if we're going to make that joint progress, because those neighborhoods depend upon us for their safety, and the police depend upon those neighborhoods for their safety. Well, I, I, I appreciate what you said, Chief. Let, let me just uh, pick up on a couple of themes that you said. Um, Number one, uh, it is absolutely true that the murder rate in the African American community is way out of whack compared to the general population, and both the victims and the perpetrators are, are black, young black men. Uh, the, uh, the 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 single greatest cause of death for young black men between the ages of 18 and 35 is homicide. And that's crazy. That is crazy. And, and so we have to acknowledge that. And that means that we can't put the burden on the police alone. You, it, it is going to require investments in those communities. 
it is going to require making sure the schools work. It's going to require having after school programs. And then it's, it is going to require us to look at things like guns. Now, this is tough. I, I, I have presided over more memorials of mass shootings than I, uh, I would like. Um, and it's heartbreaking. But that doesn't even count the hundreds of kids just in the south side of Chicago who've been shot. And part of what makes the police community interaction so fraught with potential danger is because police officers who have a right to come home so that mom's not worried, they are aware of the fact that there's just a lot of guns washing around there. And they don't know what might happen. Which means you're going to be a little, your adrenaline is going to be a little higher and it's going to be tougher. Now, the truth is, is that the politics of uh, firearms and having a conversation about this right now is very difficult. Uh, you know, in the lieutenant governor's home state, you know, you've got open carry laws. I, it, it is a testament to the professionalism of the Dallas Police Department that more people did not get shot because when the snipers started shooting, you had people in the protests who were carrying long rifles. And so they weren't even sure who was doing the shooting. Um, so we do have to make sure that we're thinking about making these communities healthy generally and not see that as separate from uh, police community relations and I will do so. Now the, uh, the, the one thing I do, at, uh, I'll, I'll just take, uh, take a moment to say two other things. Uh, number one, I know that there are some who have criticized even the phrase Black Lives Matter as if the notion is, is that other lives don't matter. And so you get, you know, all lives matter or blue lives matter. I, 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 I understand uh, the point they're trying to make. I think it's important for us to also understand that the, the phrase Black Lives Matter simply refers to the notion that there's a specific vulnerability for African Americans that needs to be addressed. It's not meant to, to, to suggest that other lives don't matter. Uh, it, it, it's to suggest that other, other folks aren't experiencing this particular vulnerability. And, I, and so we shouldn't get too caught up in this notion that somehow um, people who are asking for f fair treatment are somehow automatically uh, anti-police, are trying to only look out for black lives as opposed to others. I, I think we have to be careful about playing that game just because that's not obviously what is intended. Uh, the final point I will make is that if, Chief, you are reaching out to the community ahead of time, doing all the work you're doing, and have built trust, that doesn't guarantee that when something like this happens, there's still not going to be a flare-up because there's a lot of pent-up frustration uh, in a lot of these communities. And there are times where people are irresponsible in uh, how they uh, try to address it. The one thing I, I can tell you I hear more often than anything, though, that I think would be helpful on the police side would be uh, initiating investigations that people feel are uh, transparent and uh, uh, certain and that in involves state prosecutors and investigators just treating these things seriously